Hi everyone, welcome to YouTube University. <laughs> In this video, we're going to talk about the characteristics that makes Earth habitable. Okay. 4.5 billion years ago, Earth used to be a very violent planet, almost like a lava world. Now, it is a temperate planet. Seriously? Now, the Earth is a temperate planet with 75% of its surface covered by water and hospitable life. Billion years ago, the environment is devoid of oxygen and high in methane. It makes life almost non-existent. However, there are studies that show the earliest life forms. These are the microscopic organisms, or what we call microbes. So the microbes left signals or remnants of their presence in rocks about 3.7 billion years ago. The evidence of microbes was also preserved in the hard structures called stromatolites. So stromatolites are microbial ribs created by cyanobacteria, formerly known as blue-green algae. So these are deposits formed by sediment trapping and binding. Today, 1.3 million species have been identified, but many more are still living unidentified. There might be 8.7 million species living on Earth. Humans have been present just last 200,000 years ago. But the question is, what makes the Earth suitable for life? I'm glad you brought it up because I've been dying to talk about it for a f***ing hot minute. What are the key factors that made life possible on Earth? So here I'm going to present the most important ones that makes Earth conducive for supporting life. First, we have the sun. So the sun is a star. And there are millions of stars in the space. However, not every stars are a good candidate for making life possible on its planet. So what makes the sun a good candidate? Number one, the sun has just the right size. So some bigger stars have more energy because they are huge. But it also means that they have shorter time span, which makes life impossible to form on their planet. Now remember, life takes time to form, okay? Small and younger stars are unstable. They are prone to blasting their planets with bursts of radiation. The sun also releases so much energy. However, only one billionth of this energy reaches the sun. 34% of the energies that can reach the sun is reflected to the space by the atmosphere. Of the 66 remaining, 19% is absorbed by water vapor, clouds, and ozone layer. And only 47% on average is absorbed by the Earth's surface, and less than 1% is used by plants for photosynthesis. So the next one is the water. Let me actually write this down. All life forms need water. Without it, life on Earth won't be possible. The human body is actually 60% water. The Earth is unique amongst the rocky planets in the solar system because it is the only planet with oceans of liquid water. Now, let's recall that rocky planets are the Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. So they are the closest four planets to the Sun and they are made up of rocks and metals. So, the liquid water continues to exist because the planet is distant enough from the sun. Because of that, it does not lose water to the runaway greenhouse effect. So, what is a greenhouse effect or runaway greenhouse effect? So, just to give you an overview, a runaway greenhouse effect occurs when a planet's atmosphere contains greenhouse gas in an amount sufficient to block thermal radiation from the planet. So, this prevents the planet from cooling and from having liquid water on its surface. The best example is Venus. That is why Venus is the hottest planet. The Earth is also not so far that causes water to freeze. So again, if you are too far from the sun, of course the temperature is very low. Therefore, the water will freeze. 
the earth is just in the right place from the sun. Okay, this here. <laughs> Next is the moon. Surprisingly, life on earth will not exist without the moon. So it is big enough and far enough to stabilize our planet's rotation. Without it, the tilt of the earth would shift greatly over time, causing massive changes in the climate. So, scientists believe that, number one, complex life form would less likely to exist or evolve without the moon. Scientists also believe that ocean tides that are created by the gravitational pull of the moon have played an important role in the support of life creation. Next is the magnetic field. I feel like I need to take notes or something. Now, the outer part of the Earth's core is molten, which causes the Earth's magnetic field. The flowing of liquid metal in the outer core of the planet generates electric currents. Now, the rotation of Earth on its axis causes the these electric currents to form a magnetic field which extends around the planet. So again, it extends from interior out into space. So this deflects most of the solar winds whose charged particles would strip away the ozone layer that protects the planet from harmful UV radiation. That is shocking! Now, what happens when the core completely cools down? This is a case for the FBI. So when this happens, Earth can become like Mars. Well, I'm good with Mars. With very thin atmosphere, with no volcanoes or earthquakes, it would be very difficult for life to survive. Last is the ozone layer. It is also called the ozone shield. It is the region that absorbs sun's UV radiation. So where can you find it? It is near the stratosphere. So the ozone layer contains high concentration of ozone. That's very deep. The chemical symbol for ozone is O3, so meaning you have three oxygen molecules. Now, the weakening of the ozone layer have health impacts. So when this thins, when this thins, we would be more susceptible to skin cancer and impaired immune system. When it's all gone, life would probably not exist.